So this is how I make a two-piece plaster mold for a slip casting. Uh, so first I have to decide where the dividing line is going to be, so where the mold will split in half. Uh, if I wanted to, I could keep the head on this and it would still be a two-part mold. But if I did, the seam would end up going through the eyeballs, which would mean it would be difficult cleanup and time consuming. And so it's often easier just to take the head off. This way, when I take the head off, I will also have a place where I can pour the slip into the mold and pour it back out of. Um, also, the, it's easier to have the wings separate as well. I could have the head on there and the wings on there all on the same piece. And then it would be probably something like a four piece mold. And so four piece mold is easy enough to make, but it's a lot more time consuming. And then again, I still wouldn't have a place to pour in the slip for slip casting. So now the next thing I need to do is once I kind of figure out where the dividing line is, that now I'm drawing that line on with a Sharpie and I'm putting my thumbs on both sides of that Sharpie to check for undercuts. And if I have a slight undercut, then I just move the Sharpie line slightly and I check both sides to make sure that I'm getting it dead in the middle. So I also like to use a Sharpie to mark the dividing line with because it makes it easier to see the undercuts. And then also when it comes time to create the clay bed for the piece, I can just pay attention to the Sharpie line and just follow that as I go. Um, So, so also what's great with having the head and the wing separate is that when it comes time to slip cast the piece, I can reassemble it in lots of different ways. So I can make this bird look like it's uh, unique and individual and because of the different positionings. Um, and so with one mold, I can have several, bur several different birds that look different from one another. So you know, I need to create the dividing line on all my pieces. So I've done that with create, uh, drawing on the dividing line on the wings, as well as the head, as you can see. All right, the next thing that I need to do is create a clay bed. So I just begin this process by laying out all the pieces roughly where I think they're gonna go. The most important part about this is that when I create this clay bed, is that I make a nice uh, level bed. And so that means that I have to pay attention to that divide line. And so I want that divide line that I created with the Sharpie, I want that line to be nice and parallel with the table. So it's important to create a nice level bed. Um, if I don't create a nice level bed, then my plaster mold will be uneven. So at the top, it will be thick. And then at the bottom, it will be thinner. And so uh, it's important to really pay attention to that dividing line and make that as level as possible. You'll notice that I'm using two different clay bodies here. And the main reason that I do that is it just makes it a lot easier to see what I'm doing. So since the hummingbird is a different color than the clay bed, I can really see where that divide line is and make sure that I'm Digging, in, digging into the clay bed and not digging into the hummingbird as I'm creating this bed. So the hummingbird is greenware, so it's raw clay that's not been fired. And so it is slightly fragile and delicate. So I do need to be careful around it. Since I am creating a mold for slip casting, it is important to incorporate a sprue sprue, S-P-R-U-E. So the sprue is just the passage for the casting slip to enter the plaster mold and to exit it. So I need to create a sprue at the hummingbird's head and obviously the hummingbird's body as well as the wings. And so I like when I create my sprue, I want to make a nice generous sprue so that I don't have any problems um, pouring, the, pouring the casting slip into the mold as well as pouring it back out. So I like to create nice, generous sprues for my casting slip. Another factor to consider when you are creating this mold is that you want to create a nice, generous mold. You want to create a nice, generous bed for your clay piece to sit inside of. Um, you don't want it too big and you don't want it too small. You don't want it too big because you don't want to waste plaster 
but you don't want it too small, otherwise you'll create problems. So basically, you want to create about a one or two inch buffer between the edge of the mold and the hummingbird itself. So for instance, the widest point of this piece is the tail feathers, the wing tips, and the hummingbird beak. Those are the parts that protrude out the furthest. So I want to make sure that my clay bed goes beyond those elements about one to two inches. Generally, I prefer about one and a half inches. Um, if you don't do that, if you are stingy with your bed and you don't give yourself that big of a buffer, you have the potential to damage your mold. So you're gonna use this mold probably over and over again. And as you use this mold, as you open and close it time and time again, often the edges can chip on you. And so if you do not have a large enough buffer, generally what will happen is you'll accidentally chip the edge of your mold, which will create a hole in your mold. Once you have a hole in your mold, <laughs> obviously the slip just pours right out and then it's not a lot of fun to use. As I was saying, you are going to want to use this mold a lot. Basically, you can expect to get 50 to 100 casts out of a single mold. So the reason you would only get 50 casts out of one mold is if you have a lot of texture on the surface of your piece. And so every time you cast your object, you are actually wearing away the, the plaster mold. And so it over time slowly erodes and kind of disintegrates. If you have a lot of texture, that texture will erode over time, and after about 50 casts, the texture won't be very good anymore. If you are creating a piece that doesn't have any texture, that's nice and smooth, you can expect to get about 100 casts out of that piece, give or take. As I stated earlier, the hummingbird is actually greenware. So when I make molds, I do prefer to make them from my clay pieces that are greenware, in the greenware stage. And generally I like them to be leather hard. It's okay if they're bone dry, but leather hard is the best. It's okay if the piece is bone dry, but when a piece is bone dry, it's much more fragile. When it's leather hard, it's a lot more durable. And so I like it to be leather hard because that way when I make the mold, at some point I have to pull the hummingbird back out it's a lot easier to pull it out because it's malleable clay. I could potentially fire the piece first and then make a mold out of it, but that becomes a lot more difficult. Part of the problem with that is I have to make my dividing line perfect. And so it needs to be perfectly centered so that I'm not creating any undercuts. And if I don't quite get that dividing line perfectly right, then it's just going to be more difficult to pull out of the mold. So generally, it's a lot easier to make a plaster mold from something that's clay. Since I'm bedding it out with clay as well, I like to make sure that the clay that I'm using for the bed is a lot more moist than the clay that I'm using for the hummingbird. And so that way, wet clay does not stick to dry clay. And so it makes it a lot easier when I'm using that clay bed because I know that it's not go going to stick and join to the hummingbird. So it will make my life a lot easier creating that nice, clean, level bed that is not sticking to the hummingbird. So another thing that is important when I am creating this clay bed is that I am creating a nice 90 degree angle from the edges of the hummingbird to the clay bed. So I need a nice flat clay bed and I don't want a 45 degree angle as it touches the hummingbird. I really want a nice 90 degree angle. And so the reason I want a nice tight clean angle as that clay bed touches the hummingbird is that it creates a much better seam. So for instance, if I had a 45 degree angle where it touches the hummingbird, um, then part of my seam on one side of the bed will be really thin. And so 
it'll be easier for that seam to chip away. And then I will have a really big seam that needs to be cleaned up afterwards. So if I create a nice 90 degree angle, um, then I have equal seams on both sides and I've created a nice seal. So basically, if you don't get that nice 90 degree angle, it's really easy to chip your mold and especially as you use it time and time again, and then you'll end up with a much larger seam, which takes more time to clean up. And then potentially as if your seam is really large, you're removing quite a bit of clay there and you're creating a thin spot in the clay piece. So you really want to make sure that you're creating a nice clean 90 degree angle. This particular type of mold is commonly referred to as a gang mold. A gang mold is a mold that has more than one element. This mold actually has four elements. It's got the head, body, and the two wings. There are a lot of reasons to create a gang mold. Uh, the most important reason is that it keeps all your parts and pieces in one mold. Therefore, you are less likely to lose elements of your mold. Another great benefit of creating a gang mold is that it makes your mold library easy to be clean and organized. And so when you are trying to slip cast something, you're not trying to locate all the various parts of your object that you're trying to make. They're all contained within one mold. I've already talked about the importance of creating a nice level bed. In addition to creating a nice level bed, you want your bed to be very clean. And so it's important to take the time to clean up the bed so that you have a nice smooth surface. This is a tool that you're going to want to use over and over again. So you want to make a nice good tool. If you don't take the time to clean up your bed, you have potential for bits and pieces of your plaster to break off. Therefore, your mold won't fit together as well anymore and it won't cast as nicely and it will also make it more difficult to clean up. As I am cleaning up this bed, I am spending a lot of time paying attention to where the bed meets the hummingbird and really creating a nice clean line and really reinforcing that 90 degree angle that I've created. So I will use a paintbrush to clean that edge with so that I don't have any clay schmutz or clay debris that's hung up there so that it's nice and clean. I really want a clean delineation between the hummingbird and the clay bed. And so if I do a really good job cleaning that line up, I will have a very small seam when it comes time to slip cast. Creating the clay bed as well as cleaning up the bed takes a significant amount of time. But this is a tool that you are going to want to use over and over again. So it's really important to do a good job and to do it right the first time. Now it's time to square off my bed. So I will use a straight edge to create a nice squared off bed. As I stated earlier, you want to have a nice generous bed. So make sure that you give yourself at least one to two inches away from the hummingbird on all four sides. When it comes time to cut away the excess bed, I tend to cut at a 45 degree angle. And so basically my bed is bigger at the top and then when it cuts all the way down to the bottom of my bed, it's a little bit smaller. So the reason I like to create this 45 degree angle is because even when using a straight edge, it is very difficult to cut a perfect rectangle. And so this gives me some wiggle room. So the next step I will do is to place caudal boards all around the piece. And so when I put my caudal boards around there, it gives me a little bit of wiggle room because I can squish the bed into the caudal boards so that I have a nice tight seal between the caudal boards and the clay bed. I also need to make keys in the mold. And so I use the bottom of my fettling knife to create a nice shallow indent. When you create your keys, you do not want to make them too deep. If they are too deep, 
they're easy to break off and therefore be ineffective. So you want them nice and broad and shallow. And you also want to make sure that you aren't creating any undercuts when you are making your keys. The reason we make keys is so that the mold will fit together precisely in one way and one way only. Okay, now it's time to add coddling boards and to mix and pour the plaster, which will be covered in part two.